A warm welcome to all the attendees of this webinar. And thank you for attending this webinar, uh, taking the time out from your busy schedule. Now, uh, the, the, the particular topic that we have chosen for you today for this ice cream system solutions for ice cream mix processing plants uh, essentially stems from the fact that, uh, you know, uh, ice cream uh, so, uh, season is around the corner. And uh, this particular topic, you know, where people who are already having ice cream plants of this particular medium sized capacities will find something quite useful uh, for, for either upgrading the plant or possibly plans for setting up the uh, new plant as well. So going, moving ahead now, uh, the seminar, uh, this particular webinar, the objectives of this webinar is something like this, that uh, as we said, ice cream industry as such, of course, uh, the plant can be very big as well. They can be very big plants producing almost two lakh liters of ice cream. And of course, they can be very small plants as well. Now, very small plants, of course, uh, will not need that kind of level of uh, automation because they are, uh, I mean, uh, so they are a very low, low investment. And a very big size plant can really afford a high level of investment through, uh, in terms of uh, automation in the plant. Now, the challenge comes to the medium sized capacity plants uh, where um, they, uh, there has to be a, a judicious mix of investment as well as the automation that the plant really really need because it's the automation that really brings in the benefits of uh, superior product quality as well as product safety so now uh, at the same time these kind of uh, medium sized plants which are uh, roughly in the range of uh, up to 5000 liters per, uh, uh, per hour of continuous processing uh, should also have the flexibility to produce various types of ice creams uh, that uh, that they may have to produce in the plant from time to time and at the same time, the plant should also meet the high level of hygiene as well as the performance in terms of a lower uh, cost of uh, processing as well. So uh, now these being the basic uh, requirements of uh, the medium sized plants. Today's webinar, we will cover these particular topics. Uh, what exactly the particular plant will have. We will touch upon the, the basic ingredient handling, that is the raw materials that are required to be handled at the beginning, and that which goes into the batch mixing. And, in the, and actually, in the, uh, in the realm of batch mixing, we will look at how batching control can be achieved effectively. Then we'll move on to the mix processing and its homogenization, and uh, what are the critical aspects there to be taken care of. Thereafter, we will go into the mix aging aspect sections, uh, and of course, the flavor mixing that happens either in the aging or in the flavor mixing tanks uh, thereafter. And finally, the transfer to the freezers. Uh, since this is a topic only of uh, covering mixed processing, we will stop at the freezer. And uh, in the entire mixed processing sections that we talk about, it's also important to uh, touch upon and show, uh, see how we can maximize the product recovery. Because in a day, we will be producing a lot of varieties of ice creams. And we have to make sure that the, there is minimum wastage between the two different varieties of ice cream. Uh, so, uh, so, so that we can reduce the losses as well. And more importantly, uh, we look at how the entire plant can be combined together in terms of an effective uh, control and automation scheme, uh, which is of course, as I said, uh, it's, a, it's a, a balancing of the investment in the, in the, in the control requirements and how that can be achieved. So before we actually go into the ingredient handling, uh, I'd like to, uh, and it's relevant as well to touch upon, what are the different kinds of mixes that uh, this particular ice cream industry are today uh, required to be handling? Now we have the very conventional ice cream, uh, which is uh, in terms of the FSSI, FSSI requirements, it is around 36% TS minimum. And uh, in, in, in uh, talking about ice cream, we'll also touch upon frozen dessert. That is the, basically the ice cream with vegetable fat. And, uh, and uh, so both the varieties has to be handled in this particular plant. We, the plant also has to handle water ice, uh, which is of course, again, uh, basically sugar and water and having a TS of 25%. And also a very, uh, picking up very rapidly in terms of consumption as well as demand is school fees, uh, which has got a higher TS. And uh, it needs to be uh, actually also mixed, prepared in the mixed processing section uh, in an effective manner. 
So these are the basic three main ice cream types in the Indian industry, uh, and which which is something that we will touch upon and uh, how these plants has been designed to make these ice cream types. Just to show uh, diagrammatically uh, that uh, if you have an ice cream mix of around 36% or 37% total solids, 69, 63% uh, is all water in the mix stage. Though uh, people tend to say that ice cream, you know, when 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 you talk to various uh, ice cream producers, that you know it's a, it's a very uh, thin and a very smooth ice cream, but actually in in ice cream form, it sometimes it tends to be very viscous uh, because there is no air there, and that because the viscosity and the product properties are make it ch challenging for him from the design point of view. So we will now go one by one into the various sections of the plant. We are looking at ice cream mix processing, and uh, so what are the different ingredients? We have we have the plant has to have milk. Receive milk and store it. There will be a cream storage. Uh, there will be a, a facility for butter melting and heating and transfer. Or depending on the, as I said, if it is a frozen dessert, uh, then the plant has to have a facility for vegetable oil reception and uh, storage and transfer. So this is the first part. And what we say is that uh, the, the parts which is uh, essentially receiving and storage can be out of the ambit of uh, automation and that can be handled uh, manually in the plant. The another section which is uh, also uh, required here is the process water. And uh, I've mentioned process water preheating because when you preheat the water, the, the heating time required in the batch heating can come down and essentially your batch time uh, will be able, you will be able to save on the batch time as well. Now, of course, the very important part is the SMP, that is a skim milk powder in sugar and ingredients mixing. Uh, we'll look at this section, how, how uh, uh, this can be uh, optimized here. And I mentioned ingredients are here as well, which is meaning basically the stabilizer as well, uh, which has to be mixed in a proper way. So all these uh, having received the ingredients, we look at the batching control, the different ways uh, we'll touch upon two, dif two different ways of uh, uh, doing a batching control here. And uh, thereafter, we move on to mix pasteurization. And uh, then, of course, the mix aging and the transfer to the flavor tanks. Now, of course, the flavor, flavor mixing uh, and its transfer to the continuous freezers uh, will now uh, become, uh, these are the sections which are essentially manual sections uh, because there will be a small, small volumes happening uh, for each of the production lines. And uh, this has to be also operator friendly uh, from the plant uh, layout point of view. All these sections, now that we have already prepared the mix and it has gone to the freezers, at the end of the production cycle or somewhere in between, these equipment has to be our lines, the tanks and the lines has to be effectively cleaned through a central CIP system. And uh, so, so this pretty plant requires a very e a efficient central CIP system. Uh, apart from this, the plant also will need a rinse collection that is between the transfers we'll be collecting uh, a mixed phase which is the rinse uh, wherever possible we need to collect the rinse so that it can be reused for the uh, next uh, batch there will be rework in the plant so the there will be some some amount of rework melting and uh, it's used in the next batch preparation for the mix there will be certain sections of for uh, making ripples will be chocolate ripple or fruit ripple and uh, uh, essentially rework and ripple being uh, smaller in quantity and uh, they are essentially manual sections. We will not touch upon that in this particular webinar discussion. And of course, the connected piping for the product and CIP, how efficiently and how smartly it is done, is what makes the whole plant uh, that much more optimized and effective. And finally, we will also look at what, how is the process control uh, uh, in terms of what kind of scheme it is that this particular plant needs uh, and what kind of controls are there in the field and what kind of reports come out from uh, this particular automation system. Of course, this plant also requires power supply and control for all the drives, which is part of this plant. But we will not look at that because that is something that you know can be worked out on, on when, when, the, when you actually sit down to work out the plant requirements. So now uh, the first section, as I said, the, the batching control, the ingredient reception in the batching control. Uh, this is a, a schematic representation of a typical system. Now this particular batching control system, we essentially uses flow meters for transferring all the liquid ingredients uh, 
uh, for which are required be it milk or cream if it is a dairy ice cream or vegetable oil if it is a frozen dessert or melted butter all the liquid ingredients are transferred and controlled uh, through the uh, totalization on the flow meter side uh, and as per the recipe required into the mix processing the tanks and depending on the uh, and then we have to also have sections for liquid glucose handling now not all uh, recipes or uh, uh, types of ice cream requires liquid glucose but wherever it is required uh, these needs to be handled if it's very small quantity of course they can be uh, and uh, um, put directly into the mix preparation tank through the barrels but uh, i mean uh, depending on the size of the barrels it does make it a bit cumbersome for the operators so we also uh, have to have uh, here is a scheme where a small amount of uh, buffer storage of liquid glucose is there and that is transferred into the mix preparation tank but in in this case since uh, since it's a very small quantity and liquid glucose tends to be very viscous we are using load cells on the liquid glucose tank itself and of course uh, very importantly the process water which is required in the beginning and finally in the end to to balance out the total uh, recipe it is also handled through a flow meter now all these ingredients are uh, actually the way the we look at optimize scheme into the in this year is we use a judicious mix of low plates and actuated valves and manual valves here so uh, the non critical operations can be through manual through manually done but the critical operations which are required to be monitored and controlled they will be uh, they will be actuated valves out here both at the inlet side and at the outlet side of the mix preparation tank and of course uh, the in terms of actuated valves we also we uh, need to introduce a water push to recover the product between the uh, batches and of course in this scheme there is a uh, the mix prepare preheating section through a mix phe which is actually going through a mix mix heating unit where the major ingredients of smp sugar or cocoa and of course stabilizers uh, depending on the recipe are added out here at this stage now this is one particular type of matching control which uses flow meters uh, the the next one uh, which which you are talking about is one that is using load cells on the mix preparation tanks now each of these mix preparation tanks will require its own load cell and uh, and uh, uh, of course now we are not requiring flow meters because now the load cell signals is what is done doing the batching control for all the liquid ingredients as well now uh, of course the rest of the scheme remains the same so the having seen these two different kind of systems one requiring uh, flow meters and the other requiring load cells we'll just touch upon the uh, little bit of pros and cons so the advantages and disadvantages of each of these types of uh, controls flow meters the advantage is simultaneous transfers are possible and when you can do simultaneous transfer of a liquid ingredient you can save on the batch preparation time also uh, when the, when when you are actually transferring the batches and the batch recirculation has already started uh, the batch recirculation uh, will not affect the accuracy because there you need to start we uh, start the batch preparation and get the required temperature but the flow meters which are outside the system can be effectively used to control uh, to the accuracy part of it in this kind of system flexible connections for inlet outlet are not needed uh, which makes the uh, system that much more simpler and of course when you talk about flow meters we are, one tends to you first choice will be the magnetic flow meters or volumetric flow meters but if you if one is requiring a high level of accuracy in the final uh, batch recipe then we'll have to look at mass flow meters which will of course uh, uh, add to the investment out here now in this case once the final batch has been prepared the the final batch weight for a checking is actually derived from the individual quantities that has been added it is not a measured quantity at the end so uh, this is more derived from the the, the data that is already captured and uh, so now let's look at now uh, these these aspects with the on the with the, with the load cell system now load cell systems load cells being more sensitive are definitely more accurate and uh, if the if the, so the recipe requires load cells then of course uh, one needs to use them in this case the advantage being the final batch weight a check of the batch weight can be done and a final correction up is possible if any particular ingredient has been uh, i mean either it's, it's underfilled or if there's error there it's possible to check the error actually correct the error 
now of course the in this case seeing being the load cell is controlling uh, the ingredients that are being added the sequential ingredients of uh, uh, of the ingredients has to be done which may add to some extent the batch preparation time out here and as we talked uh, touched upon that uh, since being the load cell the flexible connections are needed for all the inlet outlet connections which makes the uh, system a bit more sensitive cumbersome and it has to be maintained well to make sure that the load cell signals are always accurate and calibrated uh, one more thing about this uh, load cell system is that while you are actually adding the ingredients uh, one by one uh, which are required there is the same time the uh, batch recirculation is going on which cannot be stopped and uh, whatever volume is in the batch recirculations uh, the that uh, the solids in the uh, in the batch recirculation has to be factored in in terms of the batching program so we looked at two different ways of uh, doing a batching control after the ingredients are, have come into the mix preparation tank out here and uh, so now i like to just touch upon one very important aspect of what the mix preparation and the whole system is the role of stabilizers well as you know stabilizers are a must they improve the ice cream smoothness and impart melting resistance and of course they also increase the viscosity of the mix and ultimately the uh, the, uh, the thickness of the ice cream as well but uh, this is a, a desired aspect as far as the consumption point is concerned but the viscosity also brings in challenges in terms of equipment design and i would say here that uh, today is uh, i mean in the way the development of ice cream different recipes are there there is a certain uh, people you tend to use a mix of stabilizers and which can result, uh, result in a significantly high very high viscosity of the mix and that becomes a challenge so uh, when we say that uh, when we look at the uh, mix very important to uh, find out what is the thermal and the physical properties of the mix uh, which are uh, to be handled and processed in this particular plant so um, and and what i have what i have, what is important out here is that the if you don't have the properties the uh, the uh, correct properties then the design selection and the design of the various uh, parts of the mix preparation plant that is mix heating phe the mix pasteurizer the all the mix pumps the agitators of the mix tanks and the aging tanks can go wrong if you, if you don't have the correct data so this this kind of data should be available right from the beginning Uh, whenever uh, one is talking with the system solutions uh, provider now again also important for uh, is that when you are actually engaging with a uh, when you are uh, buying a particular stabilizer from a stabilizer supplier it's important to know their recommendation as to at what the ideal temperature needs to be added into the mix at what point needs to be added so that you know that 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 particular data can be factored in terms of system design okay so uh, i'll just uh, bring you up uh, on a photograph uh, as you see on the screen this is a, a mix preparation plant of a plant uh, delivered by neologics and uh, as you can see the background is a mix preparation tanks and of course the mixing unit uh, which is of course through using a funnel and a combination of uh, uh, two pumps which are required for the required uh, requirement of shearing and and uh, proper mixing of the particular ingredients so we'll move on now uh, we have we had to go into the we go into the mix processing and uh, as i mentioned out here that the mix properties play a very very important part in the proper design or selection of the mix process processing part of it here especially the pasteurizer and of course the pumps as well in the pasteurizer now one starts with saying that okay i can I, my mix is having a 37 to up to 45 percent TS, and it is quite thin. It is quite flowable. It's uh, but that's something at the in, in the beginning stage. It is uh, it it it's 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 very important to be very accurate or more uh, precise in terms of what my mix is. As I said, certain mixes types can result in a very high viscosity of up to even 2000 centipoise, and uh, that is not really possible to be handled in a normal plant. and even the pumps uh, selection of centrifugal pumps become a challenge out here so i would say that anything which is uh, any uh, this, um, uh, mix which has got a viscosity of anything above 400 centipoise has to be uh, uh, known by the uh, uh, 
by the producer and that information should be known to the equipment designers as well. Just to touch upon a few aspects about what can go wrong if we don't have the correct prop mix uh, property, thermal and the physical properties of the mix, can, it can result and if we don't have the right properties, the right data, one can go wrong in the PHE model selection and in the design of that. What will it result in? It will result in a low, low runtime. It can result in, a, in the PHE choking and uh, also a drop in pasteurization time, uh, uh, pasteurization temperature in between because of high falling that happens in the plates. Low regeneration and high steam consumption as you, as you keep running it. And sometimes the solids build up is so much that the, your normal CIP protocol will not be able to clean it. So here's where one needs to do a validation of CIP as well. If you are using thick mixes which are very thick and high viscous in nature. Also, uh, the homogenization of the mix, of course, normally in the industry, it is a two-stage homogenization, but it's also important to have the correct specifications of the correct head for the homogenizing head, because you're using abrasive products out here, uh, be it cocoa powder or undissolved sugar particles. And undissolved sugar particles can come because of an in inefficient mixing system. Uh, and uh, this abrasive, abrasiveness of the cocoa and the sugar can result in a very high wear and tear of the homogenizing head. And once the homogenizing head is not uh, of the, as per the original specification, then you will not be able to get the desired homogenizing effect on the mix. And ultimately, in terms of final mix, it can affect in the ice cream quality in the last as well. So friends, now uh, we'll move on to one uh, very interesting feature of these small plants where we can incorporate an energy saving uh, in this whole mix processing step. Now, where, where this energy saving comes from is that the, the mix in the pasteurizer, in a continuous pasteurizer, when it's getting heated, uh, it is initially getting, getting heat from the regenerating mix that is getting pulled. But since the inlet temperature is almost at around 45 to 55 degrees, then uh, there is a limit to which we can use a regenerative heat. After that, one needs to use tower water to further bring down the temperature to the maximum possible before you use chilled water for the final cooling step. Now, here we can say is the tower water is where the energy is actually going out to the atmosphere. Now, this particular energy, heat energy, if it can be captured and reused in the plant is what we are looking at. So, the, here in this particular step of uh, on, the, on the section of the PHE, where uh, tower water is used, we now introduce process water, which will be uh, ultimately used finally in the mix preparation as well. So, the process water in turn is getting heated. Uh, the mix is giving heat to that and that uh, temperature gain, uh, energy gain that is used in the water Will, uh, will result in one uh, the less steam that is required in the mixed preparation step and that much more uh, re less requirement of steam and energy is that the plant will need. Of course, this particular energy saving feature will be more uh, relevant for plants that are using water as a, as a, as a, as a major raw ingredient uh, and not milk as such. So we look at a typical example of how much energy can be saved and what it means in terms of saving of money. Now, if you're looking at a mix inlet temperature from the mixed preparation tanks of 55 degrees to a pasteurizer of 3000 liters per hour, and the temperature program of the pasteurizer being 55, 75, 80, 62, 38, and four. Now, after our pasteurization of 80 degrees, uh, you're cooling it down to 62 by using the incoming mix. But the cooling from 62 to 38 is normally done in a, in a conventional way by using tower water. This is where we say that uh, we can uh, introduce process water out here. The process water will uh, gain the heat from the mix. And uh, then this water is then stored uh, in a tank and then will be used for, uh, using the, for making the mix in the next step. So this roughly 25 degrees uh, delta T or temperature that the water gains uh, reflects uh, at for this particular 3000 liters per hour will mean around 75,000 kilocalories of energy. And uh, a plant that is uh, functioning at, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a season at uh, easily 10 hours a day and 300 days a year, will, will, this will reflect in, as 45, 450 tons of steam. And 450 tons of steam at four, uh, an average of 4 rupees per kg, which is 
the present cost in the industry for steam uh, will mean a saving of 18 lakhs per annum. So this is a significant cost that is can be saved by the by, by the producer, where every paisa accounts to save uh, to, in the in terms of the operating cost as well. So and again, very importantly, when you say a tower water. We cannot use tower water right from the beginning. When you start the pasteurizer, it has to be in tower water and change over to the process water. So the PHE has to be designed for both the mediums. Now, normally tower water uh, flow rate are much higher. So the, it is uh, it is basically the, the how well, how smartly the PHE is designed uh, that this particular uh, you know, uh, benefit can come through. Uh, if we in Neologic had delivered this kind of a, a system energy saving in our plants uh, and uh, both in, in beverage as well as in, ice, in the ice cream plant that we have been delivering now. So friends, we will, we will move on now to the next step in the plant, uh, which is uh, basically the mix aging, the flavor mixing and the product transfer that happen uh, in, that, in those sections. Now, it's very important that these sections are also uh, carefully uh, designed and, and built in a very hygienic manner because now that the ice cream has been processed, this is the last step in the, in the whole process of ice cream manufacturing where it has been processed. After that, there is no processing possible. So anything that any, any tank or any pipeline that the ice cream mix uh, passes through has to be fully clean. Otherwise, there will be um, chances of risk of recontamination and then ultimately it will affect the ice cream quality and the shelf life as well. So the mix aging, the flavor mixing uh, sections, of course, now, uh, as you say that these are the sections where now we'll see a lot of uh, requirement in terms of piping as well. So we had to design the whole the piping in a way that they can be uh, cleaned as well, as well as there is a recovery of the product between the two different uh, types of ice creams or different flavors of ice cream. Here as well, Neologic has delivered a plant. Uh, which is again having a judicious mix of flow plates, accelerated valves with, uh, with, gate, with the gate switches and uh, not necessarily with the mixed proof valves because the mixed proof valves are again, uh, will, will need a, uh, in its own number of uh, seat valves as well. So it will make the system that much more expensive. So uh, we have uh, done it uh, through using the flow plates and the uh, mix of accelerated valves as well. Now the aging tanks, of course, uh, once they are all connected and what you can say is once the once the mix preparation starts, processing starts, and one can pre make the connections, the manual connections of which tank, uh, number of tanks that uh, the mix has to be taken into. Once they are pre connected, then they can be controlled through SCADA, and it can be queued as well, so that you can have tank number two and after the tank number five, and then again come back to tank number one, where the mix can be taken depending on where the mix is or the whether the tank is fully uh, cleaned or not. And uh, as I said, uh, this particular system enables a high level of mix recovery or, or a low product loss during the mix changeover. And again, very importantly to touch upon that it is, uh, it is, it is, it should be possible to clean the header independent of what is of the tank. That is now that the mix is already in the tank, the header needs to be cleaned at the end of the production cycle. And uh, also uh, we, uh, the system should be such that there is no risk of the cleaning solutions entering the tank. So this is very, very important. And uh, whatever uh, uh, interlocks are required, safety interlocks and the safety feedback to the system is there, that should be there to ensure that uh, th there's a proper uh, connection that has been done and the system is fully risk-free. And of course, uh, the tanks also should be clean, uh, independent of the mix header, because when a tank gets empty, then of course we need to clean the tank immediately for the next batch and uh, the tank has to be cleaned inclusive of the inlet inlet uh, header or the no foam inlet those also have to be cleaned uh, so that's how uh, i mean the, that's where the system design uh, smart design comes in into play uh, now we move on to from the aging we move on to the flavor mixing and uh, the number of flavor mixing tanks of course depends on the number of production lines and the number of freezers and uh, here since uh, the, the, the flavor mix, mixing is done in a smaller tank, depending on the size of the batch of the particular flavor of the ice cream, uh, there can be number of changes that happens, as well as there has to be a, a continuous flow, a feed of mix to the freezer as well. So
so that's where they could they can be sometimes a grouping of uh, free, uh, mixed tanks that are done to feed a particular freezer now this is to ensure that there is uh, the the mixed lines are uh, done in a in a manner that they are uh, the the cleanable they are handleable but at the same time uh, such a plant also requires a flexibility to sometimes uh, feed the mix from a different group as well so for example if you are having a group of mixing tanks from group 1 and feeding a freezer number 1 and then you have a fourth group of flavor uh, mixing tanks feeding a freezer freezer number 4 the plant piping uh, requirement should be also such that maybe sometimes the group 1 of flavor mixing tank should be able to uh, feed the freezer 4 and uh, and at the same time after it is done the line should be cleaned as well so uh, that's the, that's a challenge out here and uh, that's possible to do as well now um, as i said um, now at the same time once you are uh, with the, in these kind of plants while the operations and the field side are all manually done uh, by the operators but the information of which route has been selected can also go back to the scada based on the proximity switches or gate switches provided in the different flow plates so uh, so the, the the operator will know okay, uh, how uh, the product transfer has been done for a particular day that can be captured in a report and very significantly at the end of the whole production cycle that particular line which has been used can be connected to the cip and the cip uh, the, the the fact that the cip has been done that information can be captured in the report also such kind of a plants we are looking at the cleaning all the lines and tanks but also cleaning the freezer uh, because freezer also becomes part of this particular whole cycle and uh, we need to have a system designed in such a way that the freezer cip is possible either along with the flavor mixing tank or independent now freezers uh, depending on the make and the and the, and the specifications require uh, they have a, they are more sensitive in terms of uh, cip solutions so one needs to know what kind of a cleaning uh, solution and its strength is needed uh, to to effectively clean the freezer and uh, it, it should not harm the freezing cylinder as well and of course the central cip of the freezer as said has to be covered and uh, accordingly the, the the cip system design has to be worked out so now that we have looked at the mix that has gone up to the freezer and how a, a judicious system design can be done Uh, we just uh, look at uh, how the whole the, the entire system is connected through in terms of the process automation out here now when we say that this this, this particular plant is running using automation now this is a basic a very basic simple automation system where there is a plc central plc uh, and in the front end there is a operator station or a scada for the operator to uh, to monitor and operate certain uh, uh, processes which are to be done from the central room Uh, but is and the field, but on the field side there will be number of remote ios uh, which will be collecting the uh, either giving the signal for operation actuation or getting a feedback uh, depending on the system design one needs to do that and uh, so there will be remote ios which will be communicating with the plc on its on a ethernet uh, or a control net now um, uh, the, the, this is uh, of course a basic very simple automation scheme but what can this kind of automation scheme ca can uh, do to the pr pr producer so what are the salient features this is a, essentially a central scada control up to the aging and of course monitoring beyond aging as well uh, this particular system enables uh, integrated batching control that means you are able to make different different batches of different different recipes uh, having a accurate control in terms of the of the weights or the percentages of different uh, ingredients of the mix uh, but uh, different programs can be saved so that uh, change over of batches is, is uh, seamlessly possible and uh, repeatability is possible and ingredient uh, operator errors are almost minimized out here now in this particular kind of optimized plant product recoveries are very important as i said uh, through water pushes and all major lines water pushes are are are, are to be so that uh, the the critical information is captured and monitored all the time and also very importantly we we'll, uh, the central cip systems uh, will be able to clean all the tanks in the lines including the freezers now when you say that 
uh, uh, typically of this plant, uh, which is designed uh, in a very thoughtful manner, uh, the in fact all the ports of the CIP of the flow plate, uh, including the unions, can be clean uh, in this particular uh, design, design from a certain CIP system. So uh, I mean, uh, the, the, to the maximum possible extent, it should be clean from a certain CIP system, so that the cleanability is captured, and uh, so so that's what needs to be achieved. And, and also uh, a plant like this should be able to give uh, relevant and critical information to the management. Uh, and and uh, of course, these can be uh, optimal customized, but uh, typically these are the kind of reports that can be generated. Most of the info data, of course, will be captured from the instruments or the process elements on the plant, but some, will, some data has to be inputted uh, through manual inputs, so that's to make the whole data complete. So we have ingredient reception report, uh, that is a plant inventory report. We have a batch mixing tank report. We have the report on the ice cream pasteurizer and uh, the temperatures that it has in uh, what the ice cream mix passes through. Uh, then of course, the mixed tank aging report uh, for the entire day. The flavor tank report as well of different mixes that has been uh, I mean, uh, produced and handled in the particular, particular plant. And of course, the uh, 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 temperatures, elements of what te temperatures are duly ca captured. A line-wise transfer report, as, it, I, as I talked about earlier, can be captured out here during the day. And uh, very importantly, uh, the CIP of the plant. Uh, Medium-sized plant uh, typically will, will require maybe two circuits. And both the circuits, whatever the objects are clean, uh, all the reports of the, the way the objects have been cleaned and the different parameters that uh, the cleaning parameters have been employed, can be captured and make sure uh, that the uh, plant is working as per design and meeting the safety standards. Also very important, so this kind of automation system, since we have valves and motors, we can generate maintenance reports. The data can be there in the system and uh, the, the, the maintenance or servicing, servicing requirements of the valves can be uh, duly uh, available to the operator to see that the, during the breakdown time or during the shutdown time, all the maintenance work is duly taken up depending on the hours the particular walls or motors have operated. Now, uh, friends, we have, uh, uh, in this whole uh, discussion, we looked at how the mix is handled and taken up after the mix processing and freezing. I'd like to just take you through some, uh, some photographs or some images of the, of the plant, how it looks like, which we have delivered and are delivering at this moment. This particular view is of a mix preparation and a processing section. Uh, this is the mixing unit, and these are the mix preparation tanks. And it, as you can see, the the flow plates are there in the front, uh, which are uh, which is possible to be operated by the operator in a in a, at a convenient height. And uh, of course, the actuated valves has to be placed in a in a manner that we, we have, um, there will be minimum product, maximum product uh, wastage or maximum recovery, as well as uh, changeover is happens uh, in a in a in an efficient manner. And of course, you can see the pasteurizer and the homogenizer out here. So uh, this is one particular scheme where you know we have uh, this particular thing can be incorporated. This is an overview of a plant. This is the same plant. Uh, this is a mix preparation section that we talked about and the processing. Uh, we have a mix a CIP module sitting next to that. But of course, the CIP tanks are placed outside so that the fumes don't come into the uh, into, into the main room. And uh, this particular plant was of course for dairy ice cream. So these were the tanks for milk and cream. Uh, there's a lot of space in center, as you could see in the picture there in the, in the drawing. Now, this is a view of a, a typical a flavor mixing section and the transfer. In this particular uh, in this particular whole system design that we did along with the producer, it was so required that we need to have individual flow plates for each of the tank, which has been given. And uh, of course, uh, there will be four mixed transfer pumps uh, from there to the freezer. And as you can see in the center, this is a master flow plate for the CIP of all the uh, flavor mixing tanks and the lines, uh, which is of course uh, connected, pre-connected and the CIP system takes over. These are some images of an actual plant. This is an ice cream plant uh, delivered uh, to a customer in South. Uh, this is a, a, I mean, a complete view of the plant. In this case, of course, uh, there was some uh, a little higher level of automation because it's part of an entire dairy plant. 
uh, but of course, as you said, when you uh, somebody goes goes in for a standalone ice cream plant, then one needs to have a balance of investment in automation and in terms of control as well. So, friends, uh, we have come to the end, and I would like to quickly recap which are the different sections uh, that we touched uh, touched upon. We looked at ingredient handling, what is required for the mix preparation, and its transfer to the uh, batching. We looked at two different uh, types of batching control. Uh, each have its own advantages and disadvantages, and uh, one can decide uh, what what is a uh, what is control that is needed depending on the different recipes and accuracy that is needed. We also looked at mixed processing and homogenization, and uh, we looked at the importance of having the right product properties for the proper design of the mixed homogenization, uh, mixed processing rather. Uh, and also other elements in the plant, which is the mix heating, PHE, or the uh, pumps and the motors as well. We uh, then we moved on to the mix aging section, where we say that now that the the the, the transfers are happening, a lot of piping come, comes here in these three sections out here from mix aging to flavor mixing. But at the same time, if there are a number of recipes, uh, how we do the piping, how smartly it is done, to see that there is no additional piping required. It should not become a mess, but at the same time, uh, it is it is all cleanable and controllable uh, from a CIP point of view, and also maximize the product recovery between two different batches. And for all these particular uh, sections that we talked about, the process sections, we need to have a process automation and and uh, I mean we can say a balance of automation and uh, and controls and a simple automation, but yet fully uh, effective in terms of giving uh, in, in achieving the process interlocks product safety as well as giving the required reports and, uh, and data to the to the operators and the management is what uh, is, is, is possible in this case. So thank you Shreesh for a wonderful session. It was really interesting and I also got to know a lot of things because of this session. And we have more than almost 300 participants participating in this uh, session. So I'd like to go through some of the queries. Uh, okay. So Mr. Takir Sayyad, uh, he's asking, do we need high shear mixer for efficient mixing? Yeah, if you ask me, a, a shear mixer which can mix the all the powder ingredients and mix it with the liquid ingredients properly is very much needed. Uh, people in the industry tend to use a venturi mixer. Venturi mixer uh, is okay for very small batches, uh, but for uh, but it is not that efficient. But a proper, um, a de properly designed mixer, which can impact a shearing effect to the mix that is getting mixed, uh, is very much essential. And uh, what I can add here is that uh, shear mixers can be uh, can not be very complicated as well in terms of its uh, uh, design as well as investment. When can have simple mixers as well. Okay. Okay. And Mr. Said, uh, thank you, Said. Uh, you already have our numbers and email address. You can always get in touch with, with us for more details on this. Uh, the next question comes from Mr. Pramod Tamde. What is the average runtime for neologic PHE? You have to go neologic PHE. Uh, you have to go a pasteurizer. I suppose it's a pasteurizer out here. Yes. Now, what I can say is that the as a, as a very as I said in during my uh, discussion and uh, talk. Having the right mix property is very, very important. And accordingly, then the mixed pasteurizer has to be designed. The model selection is very, very important out here. So if a, if a mix is very viscous, very thick, having a lot of gums in terms of stabilizers, then it can result in a lot of falling in the plates as well. But a challenging is to challenge you to see that the, the selection of the PHE is done in a, in a proper manner. And... Uh, Anything from around uh, five hours going up to even uh, seven to eight or nine hours is something a norm in this industry. Uh, but it all depends on the mix type. Uh, if it is a uh, if it is a thin mix, non-viscous, it can run more. But if it is viscous, it tends to fall more and it will have lower run time. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, another question from Mr. Mangesh Deshmukh: uh, What is the type of cleaning solution to be used for freezer cleaning? I think we are not address freezer today, but uh, you can just guide him or we, maybe we can write to him. 
Yeah. So what I will I will advise you is that uh, when if you have a particular freezer model or if you have bought a freezer from a particular manufacturer, you will need to take the requirements of the cleaning solution or what kind of cleaning uh, cleaning is required. If it has to be done from a central CIP system. So uh, what is the strength and what are the kind of clean solutions they will uh, recommend to you, and that we'll we'll be able to do design a system that can uh, give a. Uh, system, a uh, CIP system that can clean the freezer. Okay, okay. Uh, question from Mr. Sattanarayana, uh, A.V. Matla. Uh, I want to know clearly TW and PW for implementing in our plant in details to save our steam. Well, uh, okay. Those are abbreviations used, but uh, normally used in our industry. Uh, maybe more by us as engineers. Uh, TW is tower water and P is TW is process water. So, Mr. Satanarani, if you have more uh, query about this, you can always write to us. Uh, I move on to Mr. Atul Kimmatkar. What is the ideal steam requirement for heating of 1000 kg mix from 35 to 80 degrees? Well, that has to be worked out depending on the cleaning cycle. As I said, exactly. if your initial temperature uh, if is very low, uh, if you are in a cold, it is a winter conditions, you require more amount of steam, uh, but it has to be worked out. There is, it is, it is basic, basic calculations that is needed. And um, um, I mean, you know, uh, somebody may ask, hey, what will be the type of boiler that is needed? But uh, since a plant is, uh, boiler is needed for not only mixed preparation, but it's required in pasteurization as well as CIP. So if you, if you can give us more data on, on what kind of mix that you are having, uh, we can address your requirement. Uh, based on actual calculations uh, here. Okay. Uh, there is a question from Mr. Rajit Singh. Uh, he's asking how to increase the product losses hours. Uh, so I think uh, he has uh, how to reduce the losses hours or how to increase the product losses hours. Maybe Mr. Uh, Mr. Rajit Singh, you can uh, retype your question and we will try to answer that. Uh, question from Francis John. Can you elaborate validation of PHE in CIP? Well, validation of a PHE CIP is as simple that when you do a CIP of a particular equipment or in this case a PHE, after the CIP entire cycle is done, then ideally the validation process is means that you have to open up the PHE, see the plates and there is ensure that see that there is the PHE plates are cleaned fully clean. There is no product residue left out. Uh, then in the in the that is the uh, thing that is required to to ensure that the the product CIP is validated. And then of course you can for that particular product you can use the say uh, that particular same CIP cycle or protocol uh, until you change it. So that is the validation pro protocol. Okay. Okay. There is a question from Mr. Suresh Babu. He's asking, uh, how do we do the cleaning of filler and nuts feeder? Is it possible to do through the central CIP system? Uh, can you repeat that uh, question? So he's asking how to clean or do the CIP of filler, filling machine and the nuts feeder. Well, again, as I said that uh, the, this is, of course, uh, we are not looking at uh, production equipment in this particular seminar right now, because each manufacturer uh, designs the fillering system in a different manner. Uh, more by what my experience with the, in the industry is that uh, the, the incoming ice cream from the freezer goes to a particular hopper and from the hopper, it goes to the filling nozzle. So up to the filling nozzle, uh, sometimes the cleaning can be done from a central system as long as the system is closed. Uh, so uh, it all depends on the, uh, the, the particular filler design, uh, whether it has to be cleaned offline manually or it can be done from a central CIP. It all depends on the design and the features pro provided on the filling system. Okay. Uh, Mr. Takir Saeed is asking what parameter tells us that CIP of the PHE is due? Well, um, when you start a particular, uh, when you when you say when you start a pasteurizer uh, and the PHE is fully clean, then you have a certain hot water temperature at the uh, for the pasteurization section for the attaining the uh, temperature that is set temperature. Now, when the uh, as the uh, PHE plate starts getting fouled, 
the hot water, the heat exchange becomes less effective, less efficient. You require more and more temperature on the hot water side. So one needs to fix a, a, a temperature as an outer limit that is decided by the individual manufacturers or the producers or the processors that, okay, if I, if I start with a starting delta T is around four degrees, but in case of it goes beyond eight degrees, then I'll need to stop it. Because beyond, beyond that temperature, then the falling is so thick that you will not be able to clean it in a normal cleaning cycle. So that is a, that's a delta T that you yourself have to fix it uh, based on your product type. Okay. Uh, there is a question from Mr. Shiva Prakash. Uh, other than stabilizers, uh, whether raw materials composition will have impact on the melting property? Well, essentially the stabilizer is the one that is really affecting, uh, impacting that. Uh, but uh, the other ingredients uh, have a because ultimately they act on the, they are all hydrocolloids and in fact they bind the water molecules and the bind the product together. Uh, but any other uh, ingredient that is something one has to see in case to case basis. Uh, there is no general answer out here. Okay, okay. Uh, there is a question from Mr. Ravi Chandra Raju Ravipati, which I can answer. He has asked whether we can share the slideshow. So, Mr. Raju Ravipati. This uh, particular complete session is available, is going to be available on the YouTube. Uh, our marketing person will, of course, announce this at the end of the session. Uh, another question from Mr. Sagar Purthran. Uh, he's asking how many operators are required to operate such kind of mix plant per shift? It's difficult to say at this stage. Exactly. Uh, because the, the, the depends on the number of uh, manual operations that are there and the other ingredients that are there, uh, other manual store storage sections are manual. So, um, I mean, it, it can be anywhere from around uh, uh, around 10 to 15 operators, depending on how many shifts you are operating. So it has to be worked out individually. There is no hard and fast rule of how many operators are needed. I can say here, Kasha, that yeah. uh, apart from the loading and unloading and manual packing operations, Actually, the process plant and CIP overall will require maximum two to three people only. Yeah, the basic op operations, correct. Yes, basic operations. Okay. I think we can take last two questions and rest of the people can write to us or call us. Um, so another question from Mr. Sagar Putran. Can we operate ice cream mix plants using hot water system instead of steam? Well, we can use hot water uh, for ice cream uh, mix heating, uh, uh, and uh, but more importantly, why uh, steam is preferred or it's more efficient is because when you want to do CIP, the, the amount of heat generated, heat required for CIP and what is delivered by the hot water system is comparatively lesser, and you will have challenge of doing a proper CIP there. So uh, if the plant is very small, then of course it can be done through hot water systems. But a fairly uh, uh, big size plant, one will need to have steam. Okay. Um, last question, but I think it is uh, too technical or it needs uh, some engineering to be done. Uh, Mr. Pratap Singh Patel is asking required standard turbulence flow formula in aspect of pipeline size. This has to yeah, be yeah, of course that that's yeah. basically design a parameter. So once you once you have a requirement of yours known to us, and we are into giving a plant for you, we'll do that and we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll demonstrate how this is used in a proper plant design actually. Okay, I, I think, think we can uh, take uh, 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 one more I, uh, question. I'll just uh, come to that question. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Uh, Satyanarayan's question. Yes, asking about the. Uh, tower water and process water uh, implementation. So I, I believe his particular question was about implementing the system in their plan. So sir, yes, uh, surely I can uh, uh, have a one-to-one -one discussion separately and uh, uh, we'll see the possibility of uh, implementing that in your plan. And his sec second question was that, no, how to minimize the overall product Correct. loss. Correct. That is also important question. Yes. Over to, over to you. 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, just to add out here to what Mr. Rajendra told that you know now that the ice cream season is coming up very soon, and if you see that there is any areas of the plant that can be quickly upgraded uh, in terms of its uh, controls in the plant or any amount of automation uh, that can be done, you can quickly uh, can engage with us and see you know in a short period of time what can be done. Uh, but of course, if you have plans for a, a, a new greenfield ice cream plant as well. You can uh, write into us, and we can uh, start early to see that you know you are, you have a good plant uh, in time for the next season as well. Okay, I think that's uh, it about uh, question answers. Uh, so over to you, Nikhil. Yes, sir. Can we have the next slide? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thanks a lot, uh, Kashyap sir, for this wonderful session. Uh, moving ahead, uh, from the past six months, Neologic is conducting this emerging food tech webinar series where uh, we talk about uh, cost effective food automation. Uh, we talk about applications of top notch machinery technologies. And then again, we talk about current trends and future directions in the food processing sector and much more. So these are a few of the webinars uh, uh, happened in the past. And you can find the recording of these webinars on our official YouTube channel and as well as on our uh, website. Uh, uh, sir, can we have the next slide? Yeah. yeah. So these are a few of the upcoming webinars, uh, new trends and technologies in tomato processing, uh, new, age, new age dairy plant automation, why spiral hardening tunnel for ice cream products, and applications of uh, steri tank for aseptic beverage processing, and current trends in food safety and hygienic uh, risk assessment. So uh, all of you will get a notification of uh, the, the schedule of these webinars on all the digital properties of Neologic engineers. You will get emailers and uh, again, you will get a notification through our social media channels as well. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay. Thank so, you. Thank you all the attendees. Thank you all the attendees for your time. Thank and you very much. Please write into us for your time. Any area of interest.